All right, time for some friendly fire. Shamika Michelle, Jason Whitlock. I'm Jason Whitlock, of course. We're going to be joined here by Shamika Michelle, Shamika and Jason, some friendly fire. Shamika, I got a great topic for us. Uh, Dr. Umar uh, has said something else interesting again. You guys know Umar Johnson. Sometimes he says very provocative, interesting things. Sometimes he says silly things. Today, I think he's kind of interesting and provocative. He's talking about reparations, how he's pro-reparations, but doesn't think they should be given right now. Let's take a listen. I don't honestly don't think black people would be financially responsible enough to, you know, use that money. I think we just going to get that money right back. Oh, we are. Cause yeah, and change. Yeah. Before there's any reparations conversation, yeah. before there's any before there's any distribution of reparations, mm -hmm. we have to first organize and elect the people mm -hmm. we want to represent us. Mm -hmm. Because every penny you get from reparations is going to go to the China man, mm -hmm. to the Arab, Arab to yeah. the Jew. It's going to Mercedes, it's going to Nike. Mm -hmm. And then black people say you don't know that that's true. Yes, I do know that that's true. You know why? Because as a psychologist, the best predictor of future behavior is current behavior. Yeah, so you, you mean to tell the, me we're going to we're going to yeah. radically change our spending habits mm -hmm. with the reparations money? Yeah, it's not going to happen. Where you've never been responsible with your own damn money, mm -hmm. and that's why I've said I do not believe that the current generation of African people mm -hmm. should be responsible for the dissemination or discussion over reparations because we haven't done anything worthwhile that will entitle us to that type of responsibility. Mm. Uh. I'm anti-reparations uh, overall, but having said that, I do think uh, Dr. Umar here is being uncomfortably transparent and honest because this is part of my contender. Reparations, what, what are we going to do with it? Go, go, go to fly around the country and go to Beyonce concerts and, and buy new Air Jordans? What, 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 what are we going to do with the money? That's one thing, but anyway, your initial reaction to his contention. Uh, Jason, a lot of people got upset. I saw in the comments where they were thinking that Umar Johnson was now changing his stance and saying that he disagrees with reparations altogether. But that's not even what I heard. I heard him state true facts about how we spin. And it really should have been seen as a chin check individually and of course, collectively as to how we spend our money. I saw in 2022 that blacks actually had a $1.6 trillion spending power. So what are we doing with that? You know, he, um, you played a clip, I think maybe last week about him talking about the rappers and how much money we've had, but we haven't done anything with it. And you hear all of these people talking about black power or black this and black that. Well, where are the black hospitals? Where are the black banks? Where are the black grocery stores? I can uh, drive just through my own city and see a lot more Hispanic businesses than I can black businesses. And you hear a lot of black people saying, oh, well, it's because of the tax breaks. But we have been here for generations. We have black billionaires. But why don't we have anything else to show for um, the riches that we have. Why are we spending so much money on materialism? A $1.6 trillion spending power is a lot. And I look at the fact that we have so much materialism in, in the black culture. I like to use myself for examples all the time. You know, a place of contention in my marriage was that we had a four bedroom, three and a half bath house with a game room, pool table. I mean, the house was nice. Two Mercedes and a Cadillac Escalade in the driveway, yet we had three kids who none of them had a college fund. I felt like they should have had some type of college fund or get out here and make it on your own fund or something opposed to us having, you know, all of these material things, me having designer bags. So I think that we really do have to check how we spend money. And we're so materialistic as a culture that we don't even care about our kids so much. You know, we want to get out there and get the bag and make all of this money that we aren't even raising our children. That's how focused on money we are, yet we really have nothing to show for it. I've had a unique idea 
that I could get behind as it relates to reparations, but just cutting everybody a check sounds, it's not just sound, it is crazy and it would be ineffective and it would just create more mass confusion. What I've suggested is that if there's going to be any sort of reparations, it should be about investing in the black family. And investing in the black family means investing in the black man and putting him in a position where he can actually lead a family. And, and I go all the way back to the Moynihan Report in 1965, where we're at this pivotal moment and uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan comes out with this report calling on America in 1965 to invest in the black man and to provide jobs and opportunity for the black man so that he could be the head of his household. We pivoted and went completely away from that and invested in the matriarchy and made the government the father and the government check the father. And so what I would love to, I, my view on reparations is let's fund a project in Jackson, Mississippi, one of the poorest, blackest places in America. And let's do a rebuilding project where we offer black men jobs, construction jobs, whatever, all the, whatever it takes to rebuild communities and cities, offer black men jobs there to help rebuild those communities and, and try to spark life in Jackson, Mississippi and make that a destination for any black man that wants to actually head and lead a household and will be provided a job as a part of this rebuilding of Jackson, Mississippi. Because if you've ever been to Jackson, Mississippi, ever watched videos on it, that entire, the streets have amazing potholes. The neighborhoods are all run down. There's nothing there to build a family and there aren't men there with jobs to even start and head a family. I would start with a test case of like a super, invent the way we go, we'll go overseas, we'll blow up a country through war and then spend billions and trillions of dollars rebuilding Afghanistan. Now, let's rebuild Jackson, Mississippi. Let's empower and, and provide opportunities and jobs for black men there, pass a drug test, get you a job. If you get a fam if you start a family, get married, we'll incentivize that as well. That's the kind of reparations, work-related reparations that I believe in. Just cutting everybody a check because of something that happened 100 years ago or even 50 years ago or even 40 years ago, miss me with that. Jason, that's an argument that I could really get behind because I do believe that the solution to the what we're seeing in the black community is investing in black men. So I would be one of the cheerleaders if that was, you know, the reparations talk, not just getting a check to go out here and buy the nicest car or some more rims for the car that you have, but actually investing in black men who want to make a change in the community, who want to have a family who want to do what God put them on this earth to do I would be really for that because that is the solution and you're right for so many years we've invested in black women black men don't stand a chance almost from elementary school when we look at how school is designed I worked at a school and I saw the amount of black boys that were on drugs you know you know not drugs like recreational drugs I'm saying the drugs that we pump Ritalin. into these young kids yes riddling and feeling like they can't sit down and they can't be quiet and they can't they're not even set up at a young age to succeed so I would really be all for some type of programs that would actually put them in a position to be in better places and to have families. That's the type of reparations argument I would get behind because they are the solution to what we're seeing. We know that fathers not being in the home has had a detrimental effect on black kids. 
I would get behind that, Jason. That's the solution. Pushing women and wanting women to stand around and say they're the most educated, it's not working. You know, it it may look good on paper, but it's not working. When I see what these kids are doing in pretty much every community around America, women being in charge is not working. And if women were the CEOs of companies and these companies were failing, most people would try and get them out of the position. So the fact that we have black women feeling like they run the black community or they should be running the black family and we see them failing as the CEOs, we need to get them out of those positions. Thank you, Shamika. Great job as always. If you enjoyed this content, I need you to hop in the comments. Tell us what you think about Dr. Umar. Tell us what you think about my suggestion for what reparations should look like. All right, uh, we'll catch you next time. Help us grow the fearless army. Pound that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with all of your fearless friends.